very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers uh, we thank the lord uh, for giving us yet another opportunity to join together and to discuss about his uh, wonderful words of life uh, dear brothers uh, uh, from the past uh, few weeks uh, we been studying some important classes uh, like the lord's uh, memorial supper and uh, we have seen from the scriptures uh, that uh, when it is uh, to be celebrated can anybody tell me uh when do we need to take the lord supper so how many times uh, in a year we need to take mausam brother krishna brother it's once a year brother once a year okay krishna brother once a year okay brother once a year uh brother brother okay mausam brother i think every day okay i think every day okay good i hope uh, i think uh, you have missed that class uh, i'll be sending the notes to you and uh, the recording also kindly go through the recording okay brother huh? then we will uh, discuss again in the next week. not a issue not problem then last week we studied about uh, baptism uh, how the baptism uh, the meaning of baptism you have seen can anybody tell me what is the purpose of baptism is it uh, for the forgiveness of sins or uh, what ah uh, brother can you tell me uh, baptism is not for, for the forgiveness of sin good okay then what is the meaning of baptism uh, uh, baptism means a uh, uh remission of sins okay so that means uh, actually uh, to immerse ourselves into the death of uh, christ <clears throat> okay yeah. so uh, we see that uh, jesus also was baptized so he was not a sinner but yet uh, he took baptism why he took baptism if you see uh, <clears throat> it was actually uh, he was offering himself as a living sacrifice to the lord to do his will okay so just uh, leaving sin is not sufficient <clears throat> but uh, we need to go one step ahead uh, we studied this one in the uh, class about the church you see uh, where uh, uh, who is the real christian and who is the real church in the sight of god is it the believers or is it the followers who is the real church of god is it the believers or is followers. it the one who follows christ followers followers very good well, followers so for what is the difference between believers and followers if you see the believers just believe and uh, seek for the blessings <clears throat> and uh, a lot of other benefits from the lord but the followers are the one who follow the footsteps of jesus and do what jesus said that deny themselves carry the cross and follow him so these are things uh, uh that are symbolized in uh, baptism so this is the actual meaning of uh, baptism what we have seen so today uh, dear brethren uh, we are going to study one more important subject you see about uh, uh, miracles about uh, tongues about uh, prophecies and about uh, visions in the bible we have seen and uh, we have been seeing a lot of uh, you see prayer meetings uh, wonder working meetings and the miracle meetings are happening uh, in many places of this world uh, where great uh, preachers come and organize the meetings uh, the thousands of people uh, gather together you see and uh, the witness uh, uh, wonderful miracles uh, you see uh, all performed in the name of our lord uh, jesus christ so before uh, seeing uh, or uh, believing all these things uh, Uh, it is our duty as a christian to examine what the uh, scripture says uh, dear brethren uh, we have been uh, you see you know that uh, very clearly that uh, all this uh, classes what we have been studying we have been studying only from the bible whatever uh, you see uh, we speak or whatever we suggest whatever we show <coughs> it is all based upon the scriptures the bible so today also you see uh we are going to see what the bible says because <clears throat> it is uh, very important to know what the bible says because not only bible records uh, about the miracles uh, 
you see and all these things uh, happening in the name of christ but uh, jesus also warned us uh, about these miracles isn't it so let us uh, see the scriptures in matthew 7 chapter 21 to 23 can somebody read brother matthew 7 21 to 23 brother <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Okay. Okay, I will read. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work in quity. Okay. Here, if you see, Jesus, uh, you see, warned us uh, that uh, a day will come, a time will come, <clears throat> that uh, many people... Uh, in uh, those days, uh, will uh, say, you see, <clears throat> that we are done miracles uh, in your name. Uh, you see, and uh, you see, and um, Jesus also warned us, saying that uh, not everybody who say, Lord, Lord, uh, uh, shall go into the kingdom of heaven, but uh, he the do to the, you see, the will of my Father in heaven. Uh, you see, okay, he continues to say that uh, <clears throat> the people saying, Lord, we are prophesied in thy name. So, and uh, in thy name, we cast out devils. And in thy name, we have done wonderful works. You see, but Jesus ultimately gives them the reply saying, I never knew you. Depart from me, he that work iniquity. So Jesus, uh, you see, clearly wants uh, and uh, you see, casts off uh, these people saying that, uh, just because you did miracles in my name, just because you did wonderful works in my name, just because you cast the devils out of my name, and just because you prophesied in my name, doesn't mean that you are going to, you see, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus clearly says that these things are not so important to, for a person, for a Christian to go to heaven. Therefore, if you see this verse, <clears throat> many people... Uh, you see, misinterpret uh, this verse saying that uh, this is actually speaking about uh, other people who don't believe in Jesus. No. If you read the verse, it says, Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, not uh, everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord. Now, who calls Jesus as Lord? None of the other religion calls Jesus as a Lord. Uh, other religion people, they call uh, Jesus as a cult. <clears throat> you see, as a false prophet. But... Uh, who are the one who calls Jesus as the Lord? You see, huh? it is the Christians. And not every Christian can go into the kingdom of heaven just because we're doing some, uh, you see, miracles or casting out the devils or prophesying his name. Therefore, this puts a question in our mind. Why did Jesus say these words? You see, Jesus himself did uh, these activities. Jesus himself cast out devils. Jesus himself did many wonderful works. Jesus himself professed so many things. Then uh, when he only did all these things, when he told the disciples to do the same, why did Jesus ever give such a warning? So it becomes as a duty, as a Christian, to go and study and see what the Bible says regarding these miracles. Regarding this wonder works, regarding the casting of the devils, regarding the prophesying. Let us read one more verse also. Matthew 24, 24, brother. Matthew 24, 24. Brother, brother, can you read? Matthew 24, 24. Okay, it is written. Uh, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in such... Uh, in such a in so, so much, much that if 
uh, it were uh, possible they shall deceive the very elect. Okay. I mean, so, thank you, brother. So it also says uh, in Matthew 24 that uh, Jesus wants uh, that a day will come, many false Christ shall come, many false prophets shall come, and they will be doing uh, signs and wonders. <coughs> and these signs and wonders won't be in any small scale, but it will be in such a large scale that if it were possible, it shall deceive the very elect. It says, even the very elect, you see, shall be deceived if it were possible, dear brethren. So, Jesus wants that uh, we are not supposed to believe all these things. Uh, because a day will come that uh, these things will be done by false Christ and false prophets. Uh, you see? And uh, it uh, becomes a duty to study what the Bible says regarding this. One. Therefore, dear brethren, uh, you see, today we are going to study about uh, miracles about uh, prophecy, about the uh, visions, and about the tongues in the Bible. Hey, brethren, you will all know that the uh, Holy Spirit was given to the church. And uh, you see, when God gave the Holy Spirit, uh, you see, along with it, uh, he gave the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see, what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Uh, you see, the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are two different things. Uh. Holy Spirit, uh, everybody has. God gives every consecrated uh, person who immerses himself into the death of Christ and symbolizes it properly in water baptism. To every such person, God gives the Holy Spirit. You see, that doesn't mean that everybody should be having the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, there is a lot of difference uh, between the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is what Apostle Paul Christ to tell in 1 Corinthians 12 chapter. <clears throat> you see, he says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. No, no, all cannot be. Uh, this one, there is a, you see, uh, a limited uh, gift for this one. Let us read the verse, uh, uh, please. Uh, uh, can you read uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 29 and 30? Yeah, okay, brother. Yeah. Uh, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? Hmm. Continue. 30th verse finished, brother? Uh, 29 to 30. Yeah. Uh, you, you, do you have the Bible with you? Yeah, yeah, brother, I have Bible also. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I will go. Okay. 30, I will read 30 also. Okay. Uh, have all the gift of healing. Do all speak with tongues. Do all interpret. 31 to brother? Mm, yeah. <clears throat> but convey earnestly the gift, the best gift, and issue I unto you a more excellent way. Uh, see, here, Apostle Paul says that are all prophets, he puts a question mark. He doesn't say that all are prophets. He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, a question mark. Are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Do everybody have the gift of healing? Do all speak with tongues and do all interpret? No. He says, no, this gift is not given for everybody. I would say, so, it doesn't mean that if the gift is not there, you see, he is not a Christian and doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Many people today claim that if you don't speak in tongues, then that means you don't have the Holy Spirit. You see, many people claim that one, no? But what does the Bible say? Bible says, not everybody have this gift. So, if you don't have this gift, it doesn't mean that you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Read verses 7 to 11, brother. Verses 7 to 11, brother. Huh? <clears throat> but the manifest manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom, 
to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kind of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these work that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man and severally as he will. Ah, uh, see, what does it say? Huh? But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit. Doesn't God doesn't give every gift to everybody? It says, for to one, what is given? Huh? Spirit of uh, you see faith, and to one the spirit of healing, uh, other uh, the spirit uh, to do miracles, uh, to other the spirit of prophecy, and you see, and to other. The spirit, uh, the gift uh, to speak in tongues, uh, you see, and uh, it says uh, that uh, not uh, everybody has every gift. Uh, so therefore, we need to understand this is the same Holy Spirit, uh, but it gives various persons <coughs> various gift, uh, dear brethren. Not that everybody having the same gift, uh, you see. Um, uh, okay, so. Uh, you see, not everybody are having the same uh, gift. So, but everybody are having the Holy Spirit. See, that's what uh, your Apostle uh, Paul says. And uh, he says, just uh, because you don't have this gift, like uh, speaking in tongues or doing miracles, doesn't mean that uh, you don't have a uh, Holy Spirit. You see, that's what uh, in conclusion in verse 29 and 30, it says uh, that, uh, you see, uh, that uh, uh, not all are apostles to all have the gift. No. But it says, even though you don't have this gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, you can still continue to be a Christian and uh, be faithful to God uh, till death. Uh, and, uh, you see, and go to the heavenly salvation. And hence, uh, Apostle Paul says, I will show you an excellent way, a more grand way than all these things. He says, read um, verse 31, brother. 1 Corinthians 12, 31, brother. 1 huh? Corinthians 12, 31. Huh? Okay, brother. But covet earnestly the best gift and add show I unto you a more excellent way. Ah, he says, see, instead of uh, desiring this gift uh, of doing miracles, speaking in tongues and all, I will show you a better way, excellent way, above all these things. Uh, and he says, uh, I will show you to desire the best gift. Uh, and which is the best gift? Uh, he continues to say in 1 Corinthians. Read with her, continue with her, read with her. Also, brother, please continue. After 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, what comes? 13. Very good. Continue, brother. See, this chapter division, this verse division was not made in the original Bible. These were all made in the 14th century. And Robert Stephenson <clears throat> did the chapters and the Bible divisions, dear brother. So, it, actually, it is a continued flow of a letter which Apostle Paul wrote to the brethren in Corinthians, he says, I'll show you a better way. And you can desire this gift. And which is that gift? He mentions in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter about what? What is 1 Corinthians 13 chapter speaking about? Huh? Read, brother. Now read. Huh? Through I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. I become a surrounding brass or a twinkling symbol. See, it says, uh, though I speak in tongues of angels and men, I don't have charity, I am just a sounding brass. It says, uh, charity is important. Above all things, uh, Apostle Paul tells us to develop charity. Charity means what? Love. So, these verses are very clear saying that, uh, see, having this gift is not important, uh, but having the love that is important. So even though you don't have this gift of the Holy Spirit, eh, you can still be having love 
That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You see? And yet we are Christian. So today, let us uh, <clears throat> very clearly study about this, uh, you see, uh, subject. Uh, tongues and miracles. You see? We are going to study about tongues. Okay? Now, where does the Bible speak about uh, tongues? In the Bible, if you see, the first time the disciples spoke in tongues, you see, were uh, uh, given in Acts uh, second chapter. That was during the day of uh, Pentecost. So let us read this verse, Acts second chapter one to four. Badra Badar, can you read Acts second chapter verses one to four? Okay, uh, I'll read. And when they, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled with filled all the house where where they were sitting, and uh, there appeared unto them cloven tongue like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them uh, utterness. Okay. What happened in the day of Pentecost when all the apostles and the disciples were gathered at a place? What happened? God poured out His Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came on them, which is they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterances. So, what is the meaning of these tongues? Huh? So, tongues. Huh? Do you all speak in tongues? Huh? You, do you all speak in tongues? Badra Badar, Krishna Badar, Muslim Badar? Do you all speak in tongues? Do anybody speak in tongues here? Muslim Badar? No, no, brother. I haven't speak in tongues. Okay, you don't speak. But you have seen somebody who is speaking in tongues? Yeah, I have seen. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Badra Badar, how about you? Krishna Badar, how about you? Yes, sir. We are practicing. So you are practicing. So you are speaking tongues? Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Masam, uh, uh, Badra Badar, how about you? Yes, same. Okay. Same means you don't speak or you speak? You speak, you speak. Okay, you speak in tongues. Good, okay. <clears throat> so... Uh, as the spirit gives utterances, uh, you see, you speak, you began to speak in tongues. <clears throat> okay. Now, the same thing uh, happened, uh, you see, uh, after uh, uh, the Holy Spirit was poured on Gentiles, Cornelius, you see, he was the first Gentile convert. The same thing happened when the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Let us read Acts 10, chapter 44 to 46. Krishna Mother, can you read Acts 10, chapter verse 44 to 46? Uh. Yes, sir. While Peter had speak these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Hmm. And they and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, and many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit, hmm. Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with the tongues and Magnify God, then answered Peter. Ah, you see, he heard them speak with tongues, it seems. So, so both the incidents, if you observe, your brother, they began to speak in tongues. So, what is speaking in tongues, sir? Huh? You see, speaking in tongues means when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, uh, automatically, the, you see, gives utterances to speak in uh, uh, tongues, uh, unknown language. Uh, how Shiva Bali Bari Gora Bari uh, this is a tongue, so speaking in tongues. So when the Holy Spirit came, you said, your brother, in the, both the incidents, what happened? Uh, the brethren began to speak in tongues. Okay, now let us uh, <coughs> read this verse again carefully. You see, when the day of Pentecost was come, what happened here actually? God poured out his Holy Spirit. So let us read this verse again, brother. Continue, brother. You kindly read somebody. Acts second chapter verses two to four. Ah. Anybody can read? Patra brother or Mausam brother? Anybody? 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and see, began to speak. All filled with the Holy Ghost. You see? So how did the Holy Spirit was poured upon them? You see? How the Holy Spirit came? Eh? How did the Holy Spirit came upon them? It was like water. Fire. Fire. You see? Therefore, some many people claim now, oh, fire, 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 let the fire fall. Let the revival fire come. Oh, Lord. Ah, anoint us with the Holy Spirit fire. Yeah? You see, many people, you see, when the wind blows, they feel the chillness. They say, oh, this is Holy Spirit. Correct, no? But read the Bible. What does it say? Huh? It, does it say that fire came? Read that verse again, brother. Continue. Read that verse again from 2 to 4. Read it again. Let us see. What actually came there? Huh? Was it fire or anything? From hmm. beginning. Okay, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they uh, were sitting. And ah, they, one minute, one minute. And, what came here? Wind came out. Sound. Sound oh, came yeah. like a wind. Many people believe that. Oh, as wind came? Oh, they believe that oh, wind is the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. You see, it came... He read the verse, understand the verse properly. It says, a sound came from heaven. It was like a wind. Not that wind came literally. You see? And then continue with the next. What happened? Continue with it. Huh? Uh, and there appeared unto them uh, cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. Uh, and okay, they were... okay. So what happened? Fire came out. Fire did not come. Like fire it came, it seems. Like tongues of fire came, it seems. So fire never came actually. And wind also never came. Our people, our Christians are too fast. You see, in understanding the scriptures, uh, before, uh, you see, uh, listening to the word of God, they even won't have their own interpretation and come to the conclusion saying, oh, this is fire, fire, fire. Let us be very patient in understanding the scriptures, the brethren. Each and every verses are very important. You see, we have been studying you know, so many classes. Huh? We have studied about soul, we have studied about the hell, three words, three ways, ransom, how to study the Bible. You see, baptism, tongues, uh, Lord's Supper. So, it never says that the fire came. But anyway, okay. But once the Holy Spirit at least came, no. okay, Holy Spirit came, good. But the Holy Spirit, when it came, what happened? It says, they speaking tongue as the Spirit gave it. So because of this reason, many, many people claim that uh, once the Holy Spirit comes, automatically we start uttering some things which nobody understands. Like all these things are, uh, you see, they claim that they are tongues. But uh, the same incident also happened during the day of Pentecost. Now when they spoke in tongues, actually what happened? Eh? Let us continue those verses, brother. Continue those verses and understand Actually, what happened and what did they speak? Read from verse 5 to 11, brother. Slowly read from verse 5 to 11, brother. Huh? And uh, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude uh, came together and were confounded because that every man heard they may speak in his own language. And, wait, 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 brother. What was that? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Everybody okay. spoke in? It's our own language. All right. Own language or unknown uh, language? Them uh, speak in his own language. Ah, underline it. See, everybody underline it. It never says they spoke in unknown language. He clearly says that they spoke in their own language. Whose own language? A language which somebody can understand. A tongue which somebody can clearly understand. That's what they spoke. And they were very shocked to see how they are speaking in our mother tongue. 
read brother continue brother read it says there only continue brother read ah and and they were all amazed and marveled uh, saying one to another behold are not all these which speak uh, galileans and how here we every man in our own tongue see? wherein we Pepon, see how come these people are speaking in our own tongue in which we were born you see so what was the language they spoke they spoke unknown language no 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 they spoke very clearly understandable language which others who heard it they clearly discerned that this is their own language their own mother tongue therefore you see what is the meaning of tongues in the bible you see tongue means what now we say no which is your mother tongue teacher asks no to a student now, now tell me which is your mother tongue which is your mother tongue all of you which is your mother tongue? nepali newari my no, is newari brother no 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 your mother tongue is yellow or white that's what you should tell how can you tell nepali Huh? Oh, tongues My, worry. Correct. What you told is correct. But uh, tongues doesn't mean little tongue. Tongue means what actually? Language. That's what we say, no? Which is your mother tongue is what? Uh? Which is your mother language? Which is the language uh, you are speaking from your birth? Uh? That is what happened. When the Holy Spirit was poured upon all the disciples, so they suddenly began to speak in which language? in other people's language where they can understand and clearly identify no no in how many language did they speak you see continue reading brother how many language did they actually speak continue brother 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 continue ha huh. keep on counting hmm. uh over in juda sorry where it is Verse uh, are, uh, yes, yes. eight from eight. Uh, from eight. Ah, uh, you have the Bible with you. Uh, I have Bible, but okay. Nepali Bible. Okay, then read from here, brother. See, I am I am showing my mouse. You can see. Okay, okay, yes, yes, I can. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, and how here we every man. in our own language hmm. wherein we were born hmm. part part ah, else see now the list of the languages are given here count it everybody how many languages are there ah parthians hmm. and medias ah and uh, elamites ah and uh, dwellers in mesopotamia good and hmm. uh, in juda and Hmm. Uh, Kappa, Dokia, in hmm. Pontus, and hmm. Asia, hmm. and Phrygia, and hmm. Pamphylia, in hmm. Egypt, and hmm. in the parts of Libya about uh, Syrian and hmm. the strangers of Rome, hmm. Jews and Pro Prosel, what hmm. is this? Hmm. Proselytes, proselytes, converts, hmm. proselytes. <laughs> Uh, Critias in the parts of Libya about Syrian and strangers of Rome, Jews and pro uh, proselytes, Critias mm. and Arabians. We mm. do hear them speak mm. in our language tongues. The uh, wonderful works of God. Ah, uh, speak in ah uh, our tongues. Underline speaking not unknown tongue. Speak in our tongue. so they actually spoke in 17 languages and the holy spirit was poured upon them today what has happened you see ha huh? just uh, blabbering they think that this is tongues no dear brother this is not uh, what bible says uh, bible clearly says that is understandable language today everybody think that uh, tongues is a sign that you are filled with the holy spirit so if you don't speak in tongues that means that you not uh, a christian at all but see what does the bible say Now tongues is for what? It is not a sign that you are believer or not. Read First Corinthians fourteen chapter, brother. So let us read First Corinthians fourteen chapter because Apostle Paul 
clearly tells about tongues in the first Corinthians 14 chapter. Read brother. First Corinthians 14 chapter 22. Hmm. Uh, wherefore tongues are for a sign not hmm. to them that believe but to them that believe not but uh, prophesy saying uh, hmm. uh, servant hmm. not for them that believe not but for them which believe. See, he says tongues are for whom? It's for not for a believer. So it is a sign for unbelievers. You see, therefore Tongues, uh, you speak, doesn't mean that you have the Holy Spirit uh, very clearly. Now, that is the reason to clarify this matter about tongues. Apostle Paul writes this in very detail to the Church of Corinthians. Why? Why did he write particularly to the Church of Corinthians? Because Church of Corinthians was a huge church at that place. It was a central business hub for the whole world. Like today we have Bombay, no? uh, or Chennai, or Delhi. So similarly, this Corinthians was a business hub for the entire Asia. All the various types of people in various languages used to get assembled at Corinthians. And so in the church of Corinthians, there was various, you see, language speaking brethren in the church of Corinthians. You see, and that is the reason it begins to clarify how this uh, you see, various languages has to be spoken in the church. Therefore, today, you see, uh, many people, uh, uh, you see, the speaking tongues. How oh, everybody, everybody starts to, to speak in tongues. And somebody who is from outside, if he come and see, what do they say? They say that these people have gone mad. How come they are speaking in this uh, uh, unknown, uh, you see, words which nobody can understand? They say, no. The same words Apostle Paul says. Don't speak like this. Read, brother. First Corinthians 14, 23, brother. Hmm. First Corinthians 14, 23. Uh. Uh, Krishna, brother, can you read? First Corinthians 14, 23. Uh, Krishna, brother, you are there? Yes, sir, I am here. Okay. First Corinthians 14, 23. Okay, sir. Uh, if... Therefore, the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? <laughs> will they not say that you are mad? That's what is happening. You see, if they start, everybody starts speaking Shiva uh, Ravi and Suddenly, somebody comes and says, what do they say? They say, all these people are gone mad. That's what Apostle Paul says. That this is not the way it should be. Hence, in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter, verses 14 to 17, Apostle Paul says that whenever you speak, it should be an understandable language. It should be in such a way that understand. understand. If nobody can understand your words, <clears throat> how can the people who listen you say amen he says therefore a tongue actually in the bible is a understandable language and apostle paul says that uh, instead of speaking 5000 words without understanding i would rather speak just few words with proper clear understanding where others can clearly understand let us read brother first corinthians 14 chapter verses 14 to 20 uh, <clears throat> most of brother can you read First Corinthians 14, chapter 14 to 20. Hmm. Uh, okay, brother. For I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. See, I will, sing I will with the pray spirit. with the spirit. Also, I'll pray with understanding. Not without understanding. I won't speak or pray in understanding. I will pray with proper understanding, clearly understanding it. Continue. Hmm. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when the shall bless with the spirit, how shall he that covet the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks? Sing 
he under, understand not what does said. For the verily giveth thanks well, but the other is not edified. See, others are not edified. So, it says, uh, <clears throat> when we speak something, how will other people tell Amen if they did not understand? So, for their edification, he says, I will speak <clears throat> in an understandable language in the church. Read with the verse 18 to 20. Brother. Continue. Verses 18 to 20. Mm. <clears throat> I thank my God. I speak with tongue more than you all. At in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding, but by my voice I might teach other also. Then, then ten thousand words in an unknown tongues. Bread be not children in understanding. How be it in males by you children, but in understanding by understanding be men. See, it says, <clears throat> you see, yet in the church, I would rather speak only five words with my understanding. So that I may also teach others. Okay, so they may also understand my words <clears throat> rather than speaking 10,000 words which nobody can understand. And Apostle Paul continues to give an example of uh, various sounds in this world. <clears throat> he gives example of various trumpets. So he says, there are a lot of equipments in this world, but none of the equipments are without proper you see, proper uh, sound. It doesn't give any, you see, uncertain sound. It gives a very clear sound. So similarly, though there are many languages in this world, all the languages has understanding. That's what Apostle Paul says. That means the tongue in the Bible is actually an understandable language. Kindly read, brother. 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 7 to 11. Krishna, brother, can you read? 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 7 to 11. <clears throat> Okay, sir. 7 to 11. <clears throat> and even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, expect, expect they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? To the battle? Yeah. You see, it says, how this possible? If a trumpet doesn't give a clear sound, who shall prepare for the battle? In Israel, there were a lot of trumpets were there. Each yes, and sir. every trumpet was giving a particular sound and each and every trumpet with a particular sound had a particular meaning. The Jubilee trumpet was there. The Atonement Day trumpet was there. The trumpet for the war was there. So each and every trumpet had a clear, understandable sound. So similarly, Apostle Paul is comparing those sounds with the language which we speak. So similarly, the language which we speak, the tongues which we speak also should be understood by others. If it is not understood by others, then it is like speaking a vain thing. Continue with that. It says there only. Apostle Paul continues to speak the same thing. Continue with that. Huh? So likewise, you accept, you utter by the Tongue, what's easy to be understood? How shall it be known what is spoken? See? For you shall yeah. speak it says, the see? air. Except uh, you utter words easy to understand. How shall you see somebody understand what you have spoken? Therefore, speaking in the understandable language is very important. Uh, continue with the next. Uh. There, there are. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without significance. Uh, none of them is without significance. Neither. So many languages in this world, so many voices in this world, but all the voices have their own meaning. So every words, every language has got a understanding. Then continue with that. Huh? Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speak and barbarian voice. I shall be unto him speak and barbarian, and he that speaks shall be a barbarian unto me. Uh, you see, it says, uh, if uh, uh, others don't uh, understand my language, then uh, 
you see they shall be i shall be like a stranger to him barbarian means stranger and similarly huh, if uh, i am not able to understand his language then he shall be a stranger to me therefore speaking in an understandable language is very very important therefore apostle paul put a condition in the corinthian church because they used to use this one as a fashion and speak in various languages in the church but nobody could understand when a stranger used to come and sit in the church they used to feel that these people have gone mad therefore apostle paul corrects them saying if anybody has to speak in a tongue in the church then somebody has to interpret it somebody has to really give the proper understanding explanation of this you see the words which is speaking tongue the translation should be there you see the interpretation of that uh, uh, tongue should be there he says read first corinthians 14 5 brother first corinthians 14 5 brother brother can you read brother brother first corinthians 14 5 brother hmm. okay it is written hmm. uh, i would i would that a all speak with tongues but rather that a prophesies for greater is he that prophesies the then then he that speak uh, with tongues except he interpret that the church may receive i edifying okay he says uh, uh, except he interpret the church may receive edification so you all speak in tongues but uh, except uh, there be an interpreter you see we should not speak in tongues he says read brother 27 to 29, brother. Verse 27 to 29, brother. Uh. Brother, brother, you can read. Brother, brother, verse 27 to 29 also. Okay. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be any by two or at the most three, three. And, uh. and by force and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter let them keep silence in the church and let yes. them speak yeah. what does he say if any man speak in a tongue he says you should be by two or three not everybody speak at a time it should be only two or three people speaking and that too how not two or three people speaking at a time he says you see that too by course one person should speak next other person should speak next the third person should speak and moreover one of the person should interpret it seems when he says if there is no interpreter then better keep silence in the church <clears throat> therefore dear brethren but today yeah, do we see any of this happening in any of the churches huh? the whole church speaks at uh, together in the tongues and there's no body to interpret the meaning also dear brethren therefore Apostle Paul says in verse 33 that God is not author of confusion but he is a God of peace. And let all the saints maintain this peace in all the churches. Verse 33 says, therefore, you see, huh? Huh, many people uh, huh? uh, you see, claim uh, it in a different way also. No? Yeah? But same thing happened during the two incidents uh, of uh, uh, Holy Spirit. Uh. See, just now we read about Acts 2nd chapter. When the Holy Spirit came, what happened? You see, the apostles, they spoke in tongues, that means in other language, and who could understand? The people who were standing before them could understand it. They could interpret their tongues, the language which they spoke. Similarly, when Cornelius was anointed with the Holy Spirit, what happened? Even there also, <clears throat> same thing happened. The Gentiles began to speak in other languages, which other people could clearly understand. What was they speaking? Read that verse, brother. Read that verse. Uh, uh, Acts 10 chapter. Acts 10 chapter, verse... Uh, Acts 10 chapter, verse uh, 44 and verse 45, brother. Huh? Uh, read verse 45 and 46, brother. Huh? Acts 10, chapter 45 and 46. Huh? And they of the circumstance which believed were Antonines, 
as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was pure out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm. For they hear them speak with tongue and mm. magnify God. Uh, then answer Peter. See, what is there? They heard. They heard the people speaking in other languages. They couldn't clearly discern it. What did they speak? They spoke and magnified God in their other languages. Many people claim that no, no, no. If you speak in tongues, like nobody understanding language, then it is like speaking to God. That's what so many people say. Why? Because Apostle Paul says one word in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter that if you're speaking in a tongue which nobody can understand, then you're speaking mysteries to God. Read 1 Corinthians 14 2, brother. 1 Corinthians 14 2. Hmm. For he that is speaking in an unknown tongue, speaking not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him, how it in the spirit of the speaking mysteries. Mysteries. Uh, because of this verse only, everybody thinks that, uh, you see, under it is it is unknown uh, language which nobody can understand. We are speaking mysteries to God. Our communication is with God. Okay. Let us uh, uh, take it like that only. But uh, in the Bible, we have so many people that God spoke to, no? Isn't it? Now tell me, whom did God sp uh, speak with? Uh? Did he speak with any of the people in the Old Testament? Whom did God speak with? Uh? Did God speak with anybody? Yeah, yes. with Moses. Very good. Moses. Yes, God spoke with Moses. God spoke with Abraham. You see? Correct, no? Now did God speak yeah. with Abraham? He called Abraham, Abraham. Then what did Abraham reply? He said, here, Lord, I'm here. Huh? He called Moses, no? Moses, Moses, from the bush. What did Moses uh, say? Huh? Lord, tell me, Lord. Isn't it? So, when God spoke to Moses or Abraham, huh, how did God call Abraham? Did he call in an unknown language? Did he call him like that? Huh? If God would have course, spoken in that way to Abraham, Abraham would have wondered, who is he speaking? Huh? Moreover, just imagine, if God would have called Abraham, saying, Abraham, come here, and Abraham would have replied, saying, if you said, if you have said that one, would God have understood? Do you think God would have understood the language? God would have told no. him, hey, why Abraham, why Moses, what happened? What is the problem with you? Kindly speak in the own clear language. I can clearly understand. That's what God would have replied. You see, but today, based upon the scriptures, many people claim that. Uh, uh, Tongue is the unknown language. They ran. You see? Huh? Let us read uh, one more verse also. First Corinthians 13, 1 brother. First Corinthians 13, 1. Uh, Krishna brother, can you read? First Corinthians 13, 1. Thirteen one. Uh. Now there were in the church that was at no, no, first Corinthians. 20. First Corinthians 13. 1. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm reading from Acts. Yeah. 13 1. <clears throat> Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Ah, and okay. Thank you, brother. So, tongues of men and angels. Many people tell the brother, this is the angelic language which nobody can understand. Only God can understand. Okay. If you claim that this is the angelic language, then there are various languages. There is the angelic language also. Okay. Then there should be meaning for it. No? For each and every word, there should be meaning. No? If you say Shiva, bra, 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 then there should be meaning for each and every word. Now, why don't you take a book and a translation each and every word so that everybody can speak in tongues? Like today we have, you know, you see, A for apple, B for boy. In your Nepali, you see, language also, there is a word, sir. For each and every word, there is a meaning. You compose the book so that you can teach everybody, so that everybody can speak in, in Nepali. Why don't we do the same thing for tongues? No. Publish a book for tongues where each and every Christian can understand and speak only this language. Many people tell that, no, no. If you speak in understandable language, who can understand that? Satan will understand. He will catch our prayer. He will stop our prayer going to God. Eh? 
You tell me who is powerful. God is powerful or Satan is powerful? Tell me who is powerful, God or Satan? Obviously God. Obviously God. Then what can Satan do? Imagine. Huh? What does the Apostle Paul say? In Romans 8, chapter 31st verse. What shall we then say? You see, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, nobody can stand before us. What did Jesus say? Even the very hairs of head are counted. None of these things will fall without God's permission. So, such God's grace is upon God's children. What can Satan do to us? You tell me. So, today, you see, you know, actually, who speaks in those types of languages? Small baby. You see, because they don't understand. They can't express their words. These are the people who speak. And moreover, they claim not today. This is a sign of the Holy Spirit. Now, you tell me, who was the one who was most filled with the Holy Spirit in the Bible? Who had more of the Holy Spirit in the Bible? The maximum Holy Spirit was given to whom in the Bible? Tell me. Badra, Badra, Krishna, Badra, tell me. Master, Badra, tell me. Who had maximum Holy Spirit? Don't know. Jesus. 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 Very good. So, Jesus was the one who was filled with the Holy Spirit without measure. Now, tell me, how many times did Jesus spoke in tongues? Did he speak in tongues? Did he speak in a language with nobody can understand? When did Jesus speak? No more over when Jesus prayed. In which language did he pray? Did he pray in the tongue? Yeah. Huh? Well, disciples uh, were sitting there. Uh, did he pray in the same language which nobody can understand? You oh, Satan will catch my words. No. Let me pray in an unknown language. Did he pray? No. Huh? What did he pray? <coughs> he took the bread. He said, Father, I know that you will always listen to my prayer. Bless this. He broke the bread and gave it to everybody. Did he say, Jibara, Jibara. Did he tell any of those words? No, none of these words are used in the Bible. None of them spoke to Abraham. In Acts of the Apostles, it is very clear that it is the understandable language. The 17 language nations, they understand in their own language, Abraham. That is the meaning of tongues in the Bible. No. Why this tongue is given? Why this gift was given to the church? You see, Jesus said to the disciples, Go to the ends of the earth. And preach the gospel. Now you tell me, they were all Jewish people. They knew only the Hebrew language. With the just a Hebrew language, how could the apostles go and establish the churches from the ends of the earth? How could they go to the Roman Empire? How did they go to the Asia continents? How did they go to various places? And moreover, you tell me, Thomas came to India. The first person who, who convert, he converted was a Brahmin in Kerala in a Malayali language. How did he, Thomas uh, speak in, uh, you see, Indian language? God gave them gift. Because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, he could easily learn Malayali language and uh, preach the gospel in Malayali language. And this is the gift which God had given that specially for the establishment of the churches to the apostles uh, you see, they ran. And uh, you see, actually, this is actually a reverse of Babylon. You see, in Babel, we know, no? in Genesis 10 chapter, there is a Babel, uh, where the people had a single language. But uh, because of the single language, they began to build a huge tower going to heaven. There, God confounded their language. Then everybody began to settle in various places. This gift of tongue, that means gift to speak in various languages, is a gift where God is gathering all his church with, uh, you see, various languages to understand the gospel. You see, therefore, dear brethren, and moreover, this gift of the Holy Spirit, underline, I'm not speaking of the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking of the gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift of the Holy Spirit was only got by the laying hands of the apostles. If apostles laid hands on somebody, then only they received this Holy Spirit gift. Okay? Then only they received this gift of the Holy Spirit. Read a few verses, brother. Acts 19, 6, 2 Timothy 1, 6, Romans 1, 11, and Acts 8, chapter 70 to 20. <coughs> Acts 19, 6. When Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. 
Hmm. When Apostle Paul laid his hand upon them, then what happened to him? The gift of the Holy Spirit came to him. Second uh, Timothy 1.6. Can you read? Second Timothy 1.6. Second Timothy 1.6. Second Timothy 1.6. Timothy, uh, yes, uh, where, where for I put hmm. uh, it, not yes, clear, uh, uh, not clear for you. Okay, now, now, uh, okay, it okay, is written wherever, wherefore I put the in remembrance that those stir, stir up the gift of God, which is in. The, by the putting on putting on of my hands. Uh, you see, what did the Apostle Paul say? The gift of God. How did you receive? By putting on of my hands. It was only by the laying of the Apostle's hands that the gift was transferred from the Apostles who actually received it during the Pentecost to others. Therefore, Apostle Paul desired to go to Rome. Why? Many disciples had gone to Rome, but none of the apostles has gone to Rome. He particularly desired to go to Rome so that he may lay his hands upon the Roman Christians and give them this gift. Read Romans 1.11, brother. Romans 1.11. Romans 1.11. For, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end a may be established. Uh, you see, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, not uh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was given already. The gift uh, of what? Uh, speaking in uh, various languages, doing miracles, that you may be established. Apostle Paul desired. So, once uh, what happened, you know? Simon was there. Simon saw that when the apostles laid their hands, this gift was transferred from the apostles to the other people. And he gave money and told the apostles to give him this gift. So that he may also transfer it to whomever he want. And apostle Peter clearly says that this can be transferred like that one. It can be transferred only through the Apostles, let us read that one in Acts 8, chapter 17 to 20. Krishna Brother, can you read Acts 8, chapter 17 to 20? Okay, sir. I'll read from the screen, okay? Okay. Uh, then let they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy <coughs> Ghost was given... He offered them money, <laughs> saying, Give me also this power, that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, <coughs> They perish, they money perish with thee, because those has thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You see, what did Peter say? Huh? Let thy money perish. Even though he did not offer money also, that could not be given because that could not be transferred. You see, further to other people, yeah, it was transferred only through the apostles to the people who got it. And the people who got it from the apostles, they could never further transfer it to anybody. So, this was given in the early church only for the sake of establishing the churches. So, Naturally, when this one should stop, when this, uh, you see, tongues uh, should stop, uh, it will naturally stop uh, once the church was established. Bible clearly says that this will stop. <coughs> read, brother. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 8 to 10. Muslim brother, can you read? 1 Corinthians 13, chapter verses 8 to 10. <coughs> okay, brother. Mm. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether mm. there be knowledge, it shall mm. vanish away. Mm. For we know in a part, 
and we prophesy in part. But when that which is prophet is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Ah, what does he say? When that which is perfect is come, this shall be gone away. Tongue shall cease. The tongue shall stop it seems. So what is this uh, perfect that was supposed to come? You see, the Bible was in the writing process. Once the Bible was completed, and uh, this automatically, what happened? Uh, this uh, gift of tongues would stop it seems. So the perfect Bible, once it was complete, and this automatically you see this brethren. Therefore, this all things uh, stopped <clears throat> once the apostles died, and the Bible was written in all the languages. But today, you see, one more thing we need to observe is that uh, you see the leader will be speaking in a tongues, and uh, all the church members will be speaking in the same tongue. You observe it. Uh, if the leader is speaking, uh, ching chong, ching chong, ching ching ching, then. Uh, you see, the followers, the church members also will be speaking the same thing. Ching chong, ching ching ching. If the leader will say, Shiva uh, Rimonova, then again the people will say, huh? oh, what are the same things? Uh, so, Devadran, but they differ, uh, this has to be, you see, properly understood from the scriptures. <clears throat> okay? So, today, you see, we're going to stop here, and tomorrow, and that means in the next week, we're going to see. The other topic of called as miracles. Okay. So uh, today we have studied about tongues. And next week we are going to study it about uh, miracles in the Bible. Okay. So Lord bless these words. <clears throat> um, I'll send a YouTube link. Kindly go to the YouTube link and uh, study it. Any doubts, any questions, we'll discuss next week. Okay, brother. <clears throat>